Greetings. So in this video, we're going to talk about steel beam bending or flexure. And at the end of this video, you should be able to relate internal bending moment to internal stresses. And we're going to do that by sketching a stress distribution inside the beam. And we're going to look at two cases. Um, we're going to look at a bunch of cases, but we're going to look at when it starts to yield. So when some of the steel gets to that yield point and when the whole section goes fully plastic. And then finally, we'll be able to relate this stress to, um, to the moment using what's called a section modulus and a plastic modulus. So on the left here, what you see is a, a beam, uh, just a standard beam. It's loaded. We're going to just think of the, the general condition where it has a uniform load of W. Um, and what we have there is the cross section. And it has a length L. And so what we need to do is we need to know what, what is the... the and moment and shear in this beam, so we'll analyze it. And we'll just go directly to the, the um, closed form solutions for shear and moment. You find these in the AISC manual at the end of chapter 3. And so shear um, for a uniform load is goes up at either end, it's linearly varying, goes to zero at the mid-span, okay? And the moment is parabolic looks like this and if we look in the manual what you'll see is the maximum shear V max is equal to the load W times the span divided by 2 and that's on both ends and the maximum moment here M max is equal to W times the span squared it's just the span squared divided by 8 WL squared over 8 and let's just take some point along the beam. So we'll just take some point right here and we'll call that distance x. Typically what we're really worried about is what's going on at the maximum point. But I'm going to show the general condition here of the moment at x. And we're going to talk about what's really going on inside the beam right there at point x. At point x, uh, if you look in the same AISC manual, you'll see the moment as a function of x is equal to wx over 2 times l minus x. So that's just what the, if we wanted to know what the moment was at that point, if we knew the givens of, of length and load, we could and put in x, we could find the moment at that point. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an analogy for tension because in tension, um, is something we've already covered and it's a little bit simpler to understand. Okay, So in the t simple case of tension we have a, a, a bar or something and it has a load P on it and we pull it in tension. And so I'm going to do a similar thing here where we'll cut it and we're going to investigate you know what's going on inside the bar if you kind of think of this bar as being three-dimensional here. What's going on inside the bar at that point? And we're going to have the analogy of what's going inside this shape at this point. Okay? So we're going to start with this and we're going to slide down and we're going to talk about what's going on inside. So I'm going to take this spot right here and I'm going to blow this up and I'm going to blow this up down below. And what we'll see is kind of this internal stresses that are going on. So on the tension side here, what we have is we blow up that little piece and we have a force P acting on it and this this thing has an area A so if it's rectangular it's width times height and if we look at the stresses going on what we have is a tensile stress across the whole area so I kind of draw this as like a block of stress so you can think of every little fiber in this thing of pulling out with some stress We'll call it F sub T for tension. Okay, so that's our bending stress. Okay, and over here, what happens is when we're bending, um, when we're bending something, if it goes into bending, we get this moment, and that moment again is the moment at X. That's the moment from the moment diagram. So this is from the moment diagram. And what happens is, on the top of a beam, we get compression. So I'm going to draw the top of the beam with these arrows pointing in for compression. 
and in the bottom of the beam we get tension so they're pulling out and so if you kind of think of this beam as having a whole bunch of fibers horizontal fibers the furthest ones on the outside are pulling the top ones are pushing and then what's happening is in between there you get this distribution so it gets less and less as you get to the middle in compression and then it comes back out and it gets longer and longer in, in tension and so you end up with these triangular blocks and that triangular block basically ends up having a compressive force at the top a tension force at the bottom and that they balance each other out and what you're left with is that, that compression and tension is a couple that matches this moment and so when we're looking at the stress the question is well how do we calculate the ten tensile stress ft is equal to the force p divided by the area so we want to, we've gone over that many times um, and so f this area is in units of say inches squared this may be in units of kips so we get a, we get units of kips per inch squared over here these extreme fiber tensions there's ft and f C at the top, if it's a regular shape like a rectangle, they will be the same. And this is something we're not going to derive, but I'm just going to tell you uh, how, how the relationship is. Ft is equal to the moment, m, divided by something. It's going to be similar to that, but this time we're going to think, do a thing called a section modulus. And in our structures class, we, we calculated the section modulus from the moment of inertia. Um, what's interesting here is moment would have units of kips times, say, inches. Section modulus has inches, say, cubed, and you end up with the same units, kips per inch squared, because that cancels with that and you get two. So this is the relationship we're going to look at here, and it's analogous to the force. The tensile force is equal to the force divided by area. Here it's the moment divided by S. Now S, where do we get S? Question mark. We look that up in a table. So um, S just comes right out of the AISC manual. We get it from the table. We know the M from our analysis. We can find the tension. What this gives us now is um, it gives us this extreme fiber number. So either the tension or the compression. And that um, varies down to zero so it, it gives us the maximum stress in the in the beam so that's where we're going with this and what I, what we're going to do with design is we're going to be using this s or another number that we're going to call z for the plastic section and we're going to um, we're going to find out you know how we can use the tables for that so another interesting thing we can do is we can say well if we want to know the capacity of something we can say the moment m capacity is equal to this the moment m is equal to if i solve for m is ft times s and if i want to take it to the point where what's the moment at yield we'll call that m sub y fy times s so this is something we're going to start working with here and i'm going to draw this one out where this value here is the yield strength of the material. So, for example, Fy equals 50 for a 992 steel. Okay, and My is the moment at yield. Another way to say that is that's the moment when these first fibers start to yield. Okay, So let's take that to the next step and say, well, what is this Z that I talked about at the beginning of the video? Well, Z is, is another property of the shape, the section modulus. And let me take this little diagram that we have up here, and I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to progress it as you slowly increase the moment. So if we think about going from this end of the diagram up to some maximum back down, the moment's increasing. So at the very end, the moment is equal to zero. And so this stress block looks a lot different. There's no stress on it. 
as we increase it, the stress gets bigger and bigger and bigger till some point at which those extreme fibers yield, and then something different goes on inside. So I'm going to go down and we're going to talk about that, that progression. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a progression as we, as we increase moment. So we're looking at this moment on the section, M. As we increase moment from zero to a full, um, fully failing section, here's what's going on inside. Um, so if we just put some moment on it and no fibers yield, what's going to happen is we get this stress distribution. Just kind of sticks out a little ways here. These are in compression. Okay. Then we get some tension in the bottom. Those go in tension. Okay. And you get this stress F is uh, F is equal to M divided by S. Okay. So that's the stress and those extreme type fibers. And this is happening before the section uh, yields. If you let go of it, it snaps back to its original configuration. If we take it up to the point where those first fibers, so we kind of picture these as being fibers, those first fibers stretch out far enough where they start to yield, just right at the edge of yielding, you get to this point where the F is equal to the yield strength, Fy. Okay? And it decreases down to zero still. Okay, So those are all in tension. And then you have similar fibers at the top going out all in compression and they're also right at the yield strength. And remember from the stress strain diagram, okay, so as we get closer to the, the center there's less stress. And if you remember from the stress strain diagram for steel, uh, as we increase the stress to a certain point, the yield strength, then it starts to yield and does something else. So basically what we're doing is we're increasing we're increasing, we're increasing that extreme fiber to a point where we get right there to Fy. Okay? And then that can't take any more stress and it just starts to yield, it just flattens out. But what's nice is because we're looking at a capacity of a beam, we've got all these other fibers, all the other fibers in here that do not stress past yield and we can use that capacity. So this is what we call the yield moment moment. Okay? But we're not yielding all of the fibers. So hey, let's let's get a little bit more. So what happens is the if we put a little bit more moment on, so now we're exceeding MY. So we're going past MY. We're at some moment and we go all the way out those extreme fibers yield, okay? And we push more moment into this beam. What's going to happen is the next few fibers are also going to yield. So you get this thing where a chunk of this thing yields and then it goes back like that. You kind of see this little block here. And then in compression the same thing happens at the top where a block of the top all goes into full compressive yielding and then it drops off in the middle. Okay, And hopefully you can see where this is going where um, we still have a little bit of capacity and then finally we get to the point where all the fibers yield. Okay, So this, in this case the bottom fibers right up to the middle all of the fibers yield. Okay, So they're going into tension at the bottom and they're going into compression at the top. Okay and you're getting this extra capacity. So you get a little bit more capacity. So in this case here, F is still equal to Fy, the yield strength or the strength of the material. Okay, But in this case, um, we, we're getting that extra capacity that we didn't see down here. You can see back in this one, this was all this extra material that wasn't yielding that we're taking advantage of here. And so in this case what we end up with is a relationship where MP is equal to um, the, um, well let me, let me rethink re that, the, the stress F is equal to M over some value Z so the, the moment at P is equal to Fy times Z. 
And this z, again, is what? What's this z thing? z is a property of the shape. So we just looked that up in the ISC manual. And so to summarize this little section here, what we know is this, this yielding, my, my is equal to the yield strength times the section modulus and MP is equal to FY times the plastic modulus. And these are two limits at which, um, at which we, we design beams. Now, because we are doing what's called uh, strength design, okay, and we're using factors of safety, so because we're using the strength approach, we can take advantage of the full plastic section. And so when we when we go into the AISC tables, we will we will know our moment M M U, okay, M U is equal to the demand from our shear and moment diagram, okay. So it'll be our maximum M, okay, based on factored loads, and M U needs to be below this reduced phi MP, where this is the nominal capacity, and this is our reduction, is equal to 0.9. Okay? But I just said MP is equal to FYZ, so MU has to be less than phi FY times Z, and if we know that this is 0 0.9 and this is, say, 50 KSI for A992 steel, and we know this one from our analysis, what we can do is we can solve for Z. Z required is equal to the moment divided by phi FY. And AISC table, table, 3-2 tabulates these z values for us. So we can go directly in there. The top of the table tells us phi FY of 0.9 and 50 KSI, and we can we can pick it right out of the table. So this is where those tables came from. And what we're going to do next is see what happens when we um, when we when our beam starts to be unbraced. Because if the beam is unbraced, it can't realize this full plastic level. So going back to the beginning, relating the bending moment to internal bending stresses. That's what we're seeing here on the left. We'll get the tensile and compressive stresses. There's your analogy with tension where the whole whole surface goes into tension. Second thing, sketch distribution for first yield and full plastic section. That's our progression down here. As we increase the moment as we're going from left to right here, as we increase the moment from left to right, the stress it block gets um, bigger and bigger until they start to, until they the stress block here and here gets larger and larger until it hits the yield. And since it can't yield any further, then more fibers start to yield. And you see that here until a point where all the fibers have yielded. Once all the fibers have yielded, it's called a plastic hinge, and the beam will actually. Um, collapse and that would be full failure so it won't snap in half but you put any more load on it after this and it'll just it'll just completely bend down um, to to the to the next floor below okay and then finally what we were looking for here is relate the bending stress to moment using section modulus and plastic modulus and you'll see here we have these relationships down here and the one we're going to use the one we're going to use is this one right here, okay? And that's the one that's tabulated, but the, remember those tables only work for a, a, a FY of 50. So that's where we're going to go. Thank you.